Kansas and Alabama will be um, likely one and two today when the AP polls uh, come out. And our buddy Nate Oates is about to join us. One of the things that coaches in his position have to do, you have to manage the roster over nine weeks until Selection Sunday. You don't want to be playing your best basketball right here in, in January. So that's what that's what's next for, for Nate Oates in Alabama is managing the next nine weeks weeks with a huge target on their back. And the Alabama coach joins us now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline from his office there in uh, Tuscaloosa. Dunaway is suggesting you play worse right now, coach, so that you don't That's peak. That's not what I said. No, I that's just, what he's saying. You play worse right now, coach. That just, was Dunaway's suggestion. Just don't peak too early. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear about that. He's suggesting we play worse. Well, he, he, don't, he doesn't want you to peak too early. So Dunaway wants you to manage this yes. so that you're peaking in March. That's where he wants you to peak. Oh, well, that, that would be a good way to, uh, we definitely want to peak in March. I, I felt like typically our teams have done that. We did not do that last year, but uh, at Buffalo three out of our four years, we did peak in March. We won the, uh, conference tournament and I felt like our second year here we were playing our best basketball come beginning of March middle of March so that's the goal some of that's got to keep your guys you know physically fresh as much as possible with a long year mentally fresh we've got you know trying to do our best it's, it's definitely not, not an exact science I don't know that performing poorly now so that you can then perform better in March is the answer though. Let's, let's keep performing really good now and then even better in March. I think that's a better answer. Yeah. Uh, just since you don't hear the whole show, I want to clean it up. I did oh, not I say kidding. that Brown was joking he coming knows. to you. Yes. Yeah, Dunaway, look, Dunaway he thinks he's all smart because he sat next to scouts at the game Saturday. Yeah. Like Steven, Steven put him, you know, like Nick scout, bull scout Dunaway. So all of a sudden Dunaway, some basketball genius coach. Yep. Well, you may, may, maybe accidentally thought he was a scout. I know. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you did you learn did you learn any basketball sitting next to all the scouts? Well, I think the guy from the Pistons was a little a little frustrated frustrated with me, think telling him that I think Clowney will be really good at the next level. <laughs> and I elbowed him. I said, "See, look at Clowney right there. How good is he?" Was that was that Speedy? Was that who you're next to? Yeah, hundred percent. That was him. Yeah. And so he, I've known him for shoot like twenty years. He he ran the. Uh, the UIBL team in uh, Detroit, the family that all my kids played for, the Nike team. <laughs> so it was kind of cool. He came down and spent like three days with us. He was down the, for the practices the two days leading up to the games. That, that was kind of cool. You got to sit next to him. Yeah, and I'm socially awkward, so I talked a little too much to him early on. So every time out at that point, he went phone to his ear. I never heard him <laughs> say anything, but, but he went hey, phone hey, to ear. And he's got the black. He's got the BlackBerry still. It, it is the old school BlackBerry, <laughs> and he's got his yeah. BlackBerry to the ear. I don't think it works that way, but okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Coach, speaking about peaking, though, I mean, uh, offensively, defensively, was this y'all's best performance? Uh, I mean, since you've been at Alabama in in forty minutes. Uh, it was close. I mean. We've had some pretty good games that second year here. Thought we had some good games. We uh, we won on the road at Kentucky by twenty plus. That was a pretty good one. We uh, uh, but this one was close. I mean, our defense was markedly improved. I mean, if you saw the Gonzaga game, I thought we were a lot better on the defensive end in this game than we were the Gonzaga game. Charlie's done an unbelievable job with our defense. I think they're playing really well. You know, offensively. You know, Petway's helping me run the offense. I think he's doing a great job with them. We Our turnovers were down. That, that's been one of our bigger issues. We, we've had shooting. It'll help once we, you know, if we can get Dom going again and Mari back, those two were supposed to be big parts of our offense with the shooting, and they're both capable defenders. Matter of fact, the Mari's really did an unbelievable job on Sasser. He's much more than capable. But, like, I think they can add to the offense. We're, we're still not fully healthy. So, Maybe that's part of the plan. You know, we get healthy. Maybe it's not we play bad. Maybe it's, you know, we get all the pieces together by March and we can be – maybe Dunaway was speaking to that. Maybe that was part of it. But that's exactly what know, I was saying. We yes. get all the pieces together. But, you know, I, that, was, that was definitely one of our better performances. Yep. You know, I, one thing I loved I – mean, first of all, the atmosphere was fantastic. I tweeted this out. It was the least number of Kentucky fans – 
who were able to get inside the arena, and there were a lot outside who were looking for tickets, so Alabama fans held that ticket, and I thought that was really good. And the fact that your students were not back in, but a lot of them showed up to pack that place out. It was a really good atmosphere. Um, I, I just I, What you've created there with that atmosphere is huge. Talk ab- about how important that is for the rest of the season. No, I thought it was great. And you're right. Classes don't start till Wednesday. So students, I mean, I'm sure some are back for, you know, that weekend, but they didn't have to be back. That The student section was great. I'm not outside before the game. So I didn't know uh, Kentucky fans were still looking for tickets, which that's outstanding to know too, that Kentucky fans traveled to Tuscaloosa and got stuck having to watch it in a bar somewhere, <laughs> hopefully with a bunch of Alabama fans, but you know, hopefully that's the uh, culture we're creating. I mean, hey, look, Anywhere that has a problem with selling tickets, I think you go right back to the product you're putting on the floor. If the product you put on the floor is good enough, people are going to want to come watch it. It's exciting. I think about all the times I win as a fan. Like you want to go somewhere where fun product to watch on the floor, it's obviously better to win. And I think people like to watch the way we play and our guys play together. Like people like to watch kids that enjoy playing with each other. I think you look at our team, like <clears throat> we're talented, but we play pretty well together. We play hard. I mean, our kids are playing really hard on the defensive end. So it's great to hear that it's being rewarded in that way. Hopefully we can continue selling the place out and some people want to, uh, you know, maybe contribute to getting a new uh, new arena so they can watch the game in a, in a brand new arena instead of – Coleman's not bad, but, you know, we could use a new one. Oh, call, call uh, it like it is. Yeah. Coach Passy, they offered it is, it is awful. Uh, uh, Nate Oates starting a GoFundMe account uh, right uh, here. Uh, I like it. Uh, Coach Oates with us <laughs> on, on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He's talked with us many times about his desire for a new arena. We know where he stands on that. Uh, did Saturday show how much Charles Bediaco has developed as a player, maybe even year to year, the way he played against the, na- the reigning national player of the year? I, I think it has because it even shows his development within the course of this year. You know, we put on weight in the offseason so we could handle some of these guys a little better, but he didn't do a great job against Timmy, to be honest with you. And if you, if you look at our schedule, uh, we played Michigan state with Sissoku, who's one of the best bigs in the country. We played UConn with Sonogo, who's one of the best bigs in the country. And, you know, we lost to UConn and we played Drew Timmy, who's different than those first two, but one of the, you know, national player of the year candidate. And we lost that one. Now, you know, we had re- reigning national player of the year in Shibwe and he, he's, did a much better job on Sheway than we had done in the previous three. So I think he's getting better even within the season. You know, his length bothered Sheway. And honestly, Charles play on the offensive end helped his defense because we were exposing Sheway in some pick and rolls. You know, Charles being the recipient of some of those pick and roll lives where they put Sheway on the bench. He only played like 20, I think less than 23 minutes because he couldn't guard us on the other end. So then it it's a lot easier to guard the national player of the year when he's sitting on the bench than he's in the game. So I think, you know, Charles, Charles play on both ends of the floor helped, helped us kind of control Shibway uh, in that game. Yeah, I thought Sears had a great game on, on, on both sides of the court. And, and I was going to ask you, did he have some kind of internal bet with you or somebody on the team that he was going to score 20? Because <laughs> in that second half, man, I mean, he, he wasn't, wasn't milking the shot clock. He was coming down and he was shooting. Listen, I, he doesn't, I don't make any bets on money. I, you know, maybe it'd be a, a steals bet or a block or a charges or some rebounding deal. The money thing, they, we don't want to press him too much on the money. But, yeah, he was, he was feeling a little bit. But I, I'll say that we always say when you just lose yourself in the game, and, look, he had – Six rebounds, six steals. He won the the hard hat. Like he, he was playing hard. I think when you just lose yourself in the game, playing hard, and just being locked into getting stops, the offense flows. Like you just talented players are good when they're not overthinking offense. I don't think he was overthinking offense. I think his you could tell his whole mindset was, I gotta make tough plays. I get stops. I'm gonna lock Wheeler up. Like I mean, he he won his matchup with Wheeler that day. And we, we was good. We was a really good player, but we, we had we had Sears was better. We had the better end of that matchup on Saturday for sure. I, I chuckled in the news conference. I hope I, I hope you didn't hear me. I didn't laugh that loud. But when somebody asked you about Nick Saban being there, uh, and I was like, ah, typical Alabama. He's going to get asked about the football coach being at the game. But I love the way you went back to his quote about making their ass quit and how your team 
uh, did such a good do- job down the stretch of expanding that lead out to 27 to 30 points. And that seems to be a little little part of the DNA of this team. They they seem to have all gas, no brakes. They don't seem to be fearful, even as young as they are. Yeah, we definitely had it that game. I'll say the game before, though, with Ole Miss. And it was ironic because it was we got up 27 on Ole Miss, which is a, a pretty good number. But then that 27 got cut to 15 in a hurry, which – you know, it's not the way we want to play. You want to close that out. We got up the under eight media timeout. We were up exactly 27 against Kentucky. So then my point was, you know, I did the quick math. I looked at the scoreboard. I'm like, all right, here we are. False. Like I wrote down to 27. It's exactly what we were up against Ole Miss. We talked about it. What are we going to do from here? We're going to let it get cut to 15 again, or are we going to take this thing? And so we took it from 27 up to 31. It was up to 31 at one point. I thought our guys closed pretty good. I think the last one minute of the game, we were pretty poor defensively after it, they knew it was over. We'll, we'll try to clean that up, get the last one minute <laughs> take care of next time. But we definitely didn't stop playing with 10 minutes to go in the game like we did against Ole Miss or whatever. So I, I thought that was market improvement. And, and you're doing it with a lot of freshmen who, you know, really haven't been in these situations too much, to be honest with you. So I think it just kind of speaks to – their character, their maturity. I'm going to be honest, speak to some of the leadership we have on the team. Like Noah Gurley's in that huddle, you know, as a fifth year senior talking about we're, we're going to bury him. We're not going to quit, take it to him. Like, I mean, everybody, you get some of the older guys, even if they're not playing as much as some of the freshmen saying the right things and being the leaders we need them to be like that. That's when you start being good. Like we are right now. Uh, Alabama is the front end of a huge doubleheader on ESPN2 Wednesday night. Alabama at Arkansas, followed up by TCU at Texas. So a great double dip on ESPN2. Alabama, Arkansas, one of the biggest games in the nation this week. Coach, best of luck in that game. Thank you, as always, for the time. Appreciate you guys having me on. Roll Tide. All right, yeah. Coach. Take Safe care. Travels, yeah. That is uh, Nate Oates with us, the Alabama coach, on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs> 